All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Bruce Cryer, who is on the other side of the country in Connecticut. How are you doing, Bruce? Good to see you, John. I'm doing well today. Yeah, and Bruce is the president of the Graduate Institute and has been involved in holistic studies, both personally and professionally, for more than 40 years. And what we're going to talk about today is holistic health. So uh, I guess let's jump straight in, Bruce. Uh, define holistic health for us. Well, it's a great question because when you ask the average person, they think of holistic health as all the stuff the doctor doesn't tell you to do. <laughs> so yeah. it's all the kind of weird woo stuff, right? That's the, that's the general impression of those who are not necessarily involved in holistic uh, thinking. Um, to, to back up from the question, the word holistic really is all about the fact that we as people, we as communities are whole systems. Mm -hmm. So to do health properly, to have, have a healthy life properly, we're not just a body. We are our mind, our emotions, our spirit, however you want to define ourselves. And so holistic health has become kind of a feel over the last at least 40 years. I think the first book I read on that called itself a book about holistic health was in the 70s. So it's not new, but it really was basically saying that there are many, many modalities that could help our health that are beyond the normal medical model of, of wait till you're sick and then get a drug or get surgery or something else. So holistic health, unfortunately, has a bit of a, uh, an association with just non-traditional stuff <laughs> as opposed to no it's acknowledging that humans are whole people and all of the parts of us play into our lack of health or our good health yeah and i, I guess part of the part of the the problem is we've always we've grown up traditionally with everything being if you like segmented or you know you go to the exactly. doctor for physical stuff you know whatever i mean and there's there's rarely rarely does all the parts come together mind body etc yeah and i think the average person now especially i think in a way because of covid the the general awareness that we are all these parts we cannot we can try to separate them <laughs> but it doesn't work we can try to say you know COVID is the ultimate proof that we are one, right? Yeah. In the sense that, not that we're all agreeing about how we should be living with it or all of that, but we are all affected as a species, no question, on multiple levels, no question. So we yeah. are connected whether we like it or not. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's the first real, if you think about it, it's the first real collective experience the world has had. And it's, I mean, because you think of people who say world wars, yeah, but world wars weren't fully world wars there were parts of the planet that were pretty much untouched by it this has touched everyone exactly. so i think you're correct in in the fact that people may be waking up a little bit more now to the fact that you know physical health mental health uh, you know uh, fitness all of that thing, all of these things are interconnected absolutely and, and as i say i i, I teach on this topic uh, mm -hmm. a little bit here at this graduate institute in connecticut but i've been teaching at stanford on this on this theme for many years um, and approaching it originally initially from the perspective of an organization called HeartMath, where i spent many years and was one of the original creators of it which basically looked at the whole mind body heart soul system and said we are all connected and the more we learn about those relationships internally the more we can maximize our system if we try to say our mind does not affect our body <laughs> let, tell me how that works out for you yeah it's um, just not gonna work exactly so so what are some of the uh, what are what are some of the approaches that you people can start to take to look at their to look at their whole health and everything from a holistic point of view well, you know, I, I went through a couple of years myself of, of major health problems, having been in the holistic health field personally and professionally for decades before that. And so a, a kind of reset even happened for me as somebody who was already a proponent, already teaching about it, writing about it, et cetera. But in the kind of aftermath of that, um, I've, I've, I look at five, there are five elements, I call them catalysts to mm -hmm. bring together um, the parts of us that may be out of balance, stressed, overwhelmed with the, the ability of ourselves to, to grow and be healthy. And I, I tie it into creativity because I find that if we're not, if we have no creative outlets, which was a big challenge during lockdown, I'm a singer. Luckily, it's not my profession. Um, so I didn't like crash due to that with right. the lockdown. But 
all tell many of my friends, where's your, where's your work, you know, and many other types of people as well. But so, so it was obvious to me, just not having that one outlet of being able to sing in, in public at all um, was affecting my well-being. And I think many, many people recognize that too. Wow, I just am not doing the things that satisfied me. So um, part of that, to me, the first step in becoming more holistic about our whole life and our health is simply to start paying more attention to our self, mindfulness. Mm-hmm. We've, we've got to notice. I mean, I, I, uh, one of the big things that I was sick with was cancer. And mm-hmm. I, was very, I was slow to respond to the symptoms. I could have paid attention sooner. Right. Probably still would have had to have surgery because there was a, a tumor had been in there for quite a while. But nevertheless, I could have paid attention sooner. And we get going so fast, we forget and we're not aware. We don't pick up on those signals. Secondly, yeah. we don't move. I was just about to read an article when we started, John, about uh, how much exercise we need to do because we are so sedentary for the last 18 months yeah. more than ever. And that's super important. I find that uh, creative ideas sometimes are, are energy blockages in, in me. That I've been sitting way too damn long on Zoom. <laughs> and yeah. I need to get out, walk, get some fresh air, the, and the movement itself. Ah, I'm breathing more. I'm enjoying outdoors, which leads you to know, the third cat. Go yeah, no, I was just going to come back on the first two for a second. I mean, I think uh, uh, paying attention and mindfulness is, is a great piece of advice. Uh, I think, though, uh, unfortunately, in some ways, mindfulness, that term also has, uh, as you said, uh, kind of with the holistic one, mindfulness is kind of straying into that territory where people think it's all ooh, mindfulness um but to your point it's really about paying attention and the trouble is as we know as we get older we tend to ignore a lot more things um especially like health related if they're not you know if they're not knocking us out completely we kind of push them to the side we don't want to, we don't want to know a lot of times yeah like oh, oh what, okay. what if what if that means that then you know kind of push under the rug yeah that's that's an important thing but and and, and i think another thing that's kind of COVID has made even more obvious is how important nature is to our well-being, mm. how, how important spending quality, deep time in nature. You know, I, I was living for the first part of the, of the pandemic, I was living on the Hudson River in New, York, in New Jersey, right mm. opposite Manhattan. Uh, going outside was weird. It's like you'd go outside, but you didn't want to be around too many people because that's a pretty dense populated area. And the likelihood of catching it seemed like probably higher, but I had right. to go outside. You know, you can only stay in, a, in an apartment on the 42nd floor so long before you go stir crazy and before you need to get out and breathe. Even the possible, there might be, even if there's some virus in the air, it's better than just <laughs> staying in the apartment yeah, the whole time. Yeah, exactly. But beyond, um, beyond that, being able to get out into, into more raw nature where you're just really allowing nature's energetics to relax your system and refresh you and, and when you start to realize, oh my God, there is life beyond my apartment or yeah. beyond my, my my Zoom desk, you know. Yeah, I'm um, just getting back to what you were saying about the the exercising and uh, one of the things that definitely at the beginning of the pandemic we noticed even around here there were so much more, so many more people out walking or running and even families out walking together and all of this stuff and it seemed like very very positive, and it's all gone away quite frankly, you know, it all waned. Obviously, you know, people were like, uh, mm. you know, they got into it at the beginning, all enthusiastic. And just over time, I mean, it wore them down or whatever. But I do think there was something powerful about that, that, uh, you know, I wish more people had maintained because uh, to your point, I mean, being out in the air, um, partic- particularly if you have, you know, sedentary jobs, etc., um just so that whole thing is a very positive it, it's very it's very um it's a great way of like clearing your mind and then being able to come back you know refreshed and back into whatever you're doing i try to remind people when you walk out into nature yes it's beautiful hopefully there's gardens there's trees there's, there's something yeah. that just the sheer physical vision of it is is refreshing but you're walking in life i mean everywhere you go when you're in nature it's living <laughs> It's alive. I mean, maybe not the rocks so much, but everything else. And and the air is full of fresher oxygen that is alive and, and the energy of being outdoors. And we it's easy to take it for granted. Uh, living now in a four season part of the country, I, I spent most of my life in the Bay Area, but now living back in four seasons, it's like I really appreciate sunshine when it's not you know, 20 degrees outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and what was the what was the uh, the third of the fifth? Yeah, the, the, five? The, 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 the fourth one is called is playfulness. Yeah, 
I call playfulness the wonder drug of creativity. There is something about simply being able to be playful that is by definition creative. When you, when you think about being around little kids and just watching them at play, they are the essence of creativity. They are creating worlds in their minds, in their imaginations. <laughs> They've got names for everything. And you get down with them and you become like them because, of course, you are. <laughs> And those very traits that the kids have no problem exhibiting because they haven't learned how to be a, an adult and shut it all down yet. It kind of reawakens in you. And I, I say to people, notice all the things you haven't fully lost or you wouldn't be drawn to those kids right now and you wouldn't be down on your hands and knees playing with them and enjoying that. My point being, do, that isn't exactly, you, you know, it's like do get down on your hands and knees playing with Legos in the corporate boardroom. Sure. But there's an energetic of being playful about things that just, it's like, it's like oil on, in, on, on, on a squeaky wheels. And it, because playfulness opens your mind because when you are in a playful m mode, it's, there's not a, you're not in a box, you're yeah. playing. And so yeah. you, 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 you can go anywhere. And yeah. that's and what we often need in organizations is we gotta get out of just the linear thinking some, sometimes, not every single time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just gotta get crazy and just be silly and just, and who knows what's gonna emerge from that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Actually, one of the things that I really enjoyed during the pandemic, to be honest, was just hearing the kids outside running around, having a good time, screaming their heads off, playing yeah, their games yeah. and everything. It was quite it was quite uplifting in the middle of all of this. But it, yes, to your indeed. point, but to your point um, about that, like even in the in the corporate setting, I mean, sometimes people, yeah, it, there's a lot of corporate settings that aren't set up to be creative like that, or even, and to be honest, even companies that claim to be creative or whatever, you often, often stifle it uh, because they run it, everything through very strict processes. Well, this is my, this is my mission in life. Cause I think the number of people who were told as kids don't sing John, no painting. No, we, we're, we're a family of accountants, John stick to the family business you know, or, or whatever. But we were given messages like that. Uh, don't sing, don't dance, don't be a poet, don't be a dreamer, don't have an imagination, God forbid, because that'll keep you from doing the work that you need to do when you're retired. Sure. Take an art class. <laughs> and then, then your boss confirms the whole, the same message, John, you know what? Let the marketing people do their job. You're, we, we like you in sales, but We've got marketing people to do the marketing. And so the message we're get, we can continually hear is your creative impulse is not a good thing. You need to shut it down and shut it off. And that has huge ramifications for our health, let alone for our spirit, for, for what we want to be. And I, this is my mission in life. I mean, I went through a couple of life-threatening conditions and cancer and staph infections in my blood, and it, both, either of which could have killed me. And when I got through it all, I determined that I, I, I could have gone out in either one of those. And I'm going to now make hay while the sun shines and be fully myself. No holes barred, no, no matter what. I mean, with sensitivity, I'm not just trying to sure. be my own man and I don't care what anybody else says. Not at all. I, I feel like I'm more compassionate, more understanding than, than I was before. But uh, it's also a time to just express those things and not to overly worry and, you know, yes, some corporate environment, most corporate environments are not, do not create uh, the conditions where creativity can be maximized. It's way too much about competition and ambition and, and negative, a negative uh, reinforcement, you know, yeah. the, the, the stick approach, not, no carrot, just all, all stick. Yeah. One, you know, one, so, one so it's upside down. Just, it's upside down yeah. for sure. And just one thing on, on that, Bruce, I mean, just because I just want to underline that for the audience. Yeah, I think that is one of the areas where, you know, people get so frustrated is if you do have creative uh, impulses or you have creative ideas or suggestions, but you have no outlet for them at work, as you said, if it's kind of get back, you know, get back in your lane. Um, I mean, that's hugely frustrating. And as you said, I mean, if you have no creative outlet, yet you have creative ideas, to your point, eventually that's going to obviously impact you mentally and then uh, as a consequence physically. Well, and which leads to the fifth point in my little model of catalyst that can make a difference for our well-being and, and through creativity. The fifth point is artistic expression, that the more you can even be trying things like take a writing course, take a drawing class, do, do something even in your spare time that you just find totally fun 
and totally re-energizing and no one's going to ever see it. It's not about being a publicly famous artist or a publicly famous singer. It's just you want to sing and you and you, you should sing and, and go for it. And I found that after my, uh, my my health conditions, I started singing again. I was a singer when I was young in New York City, musical theater, longest running musical in the world. I did 800 performances. I loved, loved, loved singing when I was young and gradually lost it and longer and longer life went on. And then I discovered I needed to sing again. I really needed to sing again. And within a few months I had a gig and it was for Kaiser, the big health system. And I had to now be in rehearsals for this performance that was that was supposed to have been a keynote and I turned it into a performance because I'm singing mm-hmm. again. And the joy that I had a few times when somebody would say to me, are you free at three o'clock? I wanna just have a chat about that strategic thing we're discussing. I said, oh, I'm so sorry, I have to rehearse. And the <laughs> fact that I could say I have to rehearse it was like, it was so much better than saying, I have another meeting, I'm busy, I'm so sorry. But uh, my point being that the fact that I was doing something that made my heart sing was, gave me so much energy. And it didn't matter that that, was, I was, that wasn't going to be my career. I wasn't leaving everything to just be a singer. That didn't matter. The fact that I was doing something that was so fulfilling and fun for me made all the difference. And I really encourage people to find that thing that you, you gave it up 20 years ago and you haven't done it since. And you've been, and since COVID, you kept, you keep thinking, maybe I should get back to that poetry thing, or maybe I should get back to that oil painting class or something. Yes, do it. Not because you got to prove it to anybody, just because that energy in you that's wanting to get expressed isn't just about the painting. It's about that part of you that wants to contribute in new ways to your life. It's not about becoming a great painter. If that's a vehicle for you to awaken that creativity that's in you, yes, go for it. Yeah, that's a that's a great uh, that's an excellent point, uh, Bruce. And I think uh, and I think unfortunately, it's gone back to what you were saying about the playfulness. I mean, I think unfortunately, people suppress a lot of this because they think it. You know, yeah, I used to write poetry when I was younger, but you know, but that, 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 kind of lame. You know, I'm I'm an adult now. I'm <laughs> I'm older. I'm I've got all sorts of responsibilities, and I think that's part of what what people need to address, as you said, is like it doesn't it just do it for yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody. You don't even have to tell anybody, quite frankly. But do do it for yourself and realize that um, things have a sometimes things you do things purely for yourself and your own well being, and they're they're. You know, they can be private, but but that's the reason you're doing it. It's not for the outcome of whatever it is you're doing, like your painting or your poetry necessarily. It's great if it is, but it's the process and it's the actual getting yourself in a different mind space. Exactly. And, and it's the fun. I mean, creativity yeah. is fun. Why we want to do these things is it feels fun <laughs> in some way or other. That's why we want to do it. I haven't, I haven't had a home where I could garden in a number of years now. I miss weeding. As strange as that sounds, there was something about getting out in the garden and pulling up the weeds and then being able to see, wow, the garden looks awesome now. <laughs> I got all the weeds out of the way. I was yeah. I live in an Airbnb at the moment. I was pulling weeds around the house the other day because I just wanted to neaten up the place mm-hmm. a little bit. And that the fun of that is what I'm trying to say. That is provable. It changes us biochemically. It changes the, the neurochemicals of our brain. We're having fun. We're doing something that's satisfying and fulfilling. That changes us in ways that absolutely boost our health. Yeah, and I always encourage gardening because I mean, I, I like I like gardening because of the fact that you can't really do a you can't really do a whole lot of damage. You can't really do. You don't really have to know that much. I mean, you can instinctively do stuff. But to your point is, you can get a lot of satisfaction out of trimming a bush and going wow well that looks way good now and then you have to call out your family and they have to actually stand out there and praise us as well <laughs> <laughs> exactly but that's that's where we're at now in life is to take joy in in these little things and not not to write them off not to not to say oh that doesn't matter that's that's just silly stuff no it's not it's just as as important to your spirit and your emotional well-being to counteract some of this other stuff that's just really weighing on us right i mean yeah. it's great to meet you today on zoom you know the i don't know i don't know how many mm-hmm. thousands of hours i've been spending on zoom i've been on zoom already for six years prior to lockdown i had a mm-hmm. zoom account in 2015 but uh but now this is okay this is overboard now i'm ready for more real meetings <laughs> in person but great to meet mm-hmm. you thank god we have mm-hmm. this yeah the point i, being I just want to yeah. sorry go ahead well the, i'm just the, the point being the more we can appreciate the little moments that are different than the routines we're in, 
we, we can surprise ourselves with how much of a difference that can make to us. And, and I think um, one last point, uh, Bruce, I think also that uh, shrinking your world is a good thing in terms of, you know, focusing on the things around you, like your creativity and, you know, mindfulness and your health and all of that. And because I just think um, the way the world is today and um, with social media and 24 hour news and all of this is you can get so wrapped up in these mega global or national issues that you have no impact over and you can forget about the fact that the impact you can have is in the small universe around you exactly which is where you're most affected by life anyway i mean not exactly. to say that the big issues the wars happening in other parts of the world or the disasters happening in other parts of the world can still impact us emotionally you can feel oh my god there's poor people in louisiana again again and yet we're not there you know, where I'm here in Connecticut, you know, we, mm -hmm. we did have a big storm came through that the second hurricane that came through and it affected a lot of people in this area, but that's, that's my life is more here. Right. Yeah. So I think that's, that's your point is doing what yeah. we can to affect our immediate, but there's no downside to that. No. And I think uh, to your point about holistic health, I think the better you are, uh, the more healthy you are holistically as a person, the better you're going to be as a as a significant other, as a parent, as a yeah. colleague, as a neighbor, whatever it is, you're going to contribute to that. To the, as I said, to that universe around you, you're going to contribute much more positively if you're in a better space. Exactly. The more you bring to everything, the more you bring to everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, ne I never, I never said that before. That was, I was, I was uh, stunned by the brilliance of that. The more you yeah. bring to everything, the more you bring to everything. I mean, exactly. it's just true on, it. on, on every level, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Bruce, this has been great. All of Bruce's information will be below this video. But before we go, uh, please do tell us a little bit more about yourself and the Graduate Institute. Sure. Well, um, <laughs> uh, the Graduate Institute, let me start there because this is a wonderful 20 year old organization up here in Connecticut. And uh, the COVID has been very challenging for us because we have been a graduate school, we're an accredited institution offering a variety of master's programs and coaching programs in the fields of holistic studies, uh, consciousness, transpersonal psychology, um, health and healing, et cetera. And on the one hand, um, COVID has not been kind because it's forced us to be online and we love being in person and it's kind of a cohort based mm -hmm. model. On the other hand, people are coming to us because we're online that would not have come to us and had to travel to Connecticut. So it's a, it's a school to me that our time is is now because because there is an awakening, whether the term is holistic health or not, there is an awakening in general that this kind of stuff matters. You know, when you look at the impact that COVID has had on mental and emotional health alone, on suicide, on depression, on loneliness, you realize as a, as a humanity, we're dealing with this and let's help each other out. Let's do what we can. And so we come through as a 20 year old organization, 22 years old almost now, saying, yes, it's all connected. We're whole people. We're part of whole families. And the more, we, and, and we've learned a lot and we've been teaching on it for many years of how that can, a more holistic perspective of recognizing, wait a minute, this is a whole family here. Everybody needs to be involved. Everybody's got feelings. Everybody's got, a, got skin in the game, et cetera. The more we approach life that way, the, the, the more effective it's going to be. So uh, we're at a period of, of about to grow quite a bit and expand in, in how we reach out to the world. So it's been exciting and it, it's been a, a pleasure for me. I'm new, relatively new here, just 14 months since they appointed me president, but um, f almost 50 year background in thinking ar about these kinds of topics from my diet to early practitioner of yoga and meditation and Tai Chi and all kinds of things early uh, and, and still do some combination of all of that. So um, I've been very fortunate in my life that even though I've had some some ch challenging things happen, like the health problems I had there for a couple of years, um, I've been exposed to so many things that, that I, I love to do. And so I get great joy out of singing and great joy out of taking photography, uh, taking photographs and, and, and speaking and writing and and um, and singing, I was singing in the car. If, I get, if there's nobody <laughs> to listen in an audience, I'm happy to sing in the car. Um, yeah, I'm, that's I, the only place great. I'm allowed. That's the only place I'm allowed to sing uh, as long as there's no one else in the car. <laughs> I heard that about you, John. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. I took the interview anyway, in spite of the fact. <laughs> but yeah, these things, these things count. So you know, I think it's a scary time to be alive, right? And I think yeah. there's also it's also calling forth from everybody. 
new parts of themselves. You know, we're having to give birth to some parts of ourselves that we didn't even want to think about. And like, yeah. wait a minute, I have to be that now? I have to do that now, really? No, not yeah. well, yeah, actually, that's kind of what's happening. You kind of yeah. have to learn how to be flexible now. You got to have to learn how to be really adaptable now. You can't just be rigid, concrete, like if every day is not exactly the same, you're not happy. Well, welcome to a different world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and welcome yeah. to a world that's going to continue to um, be like that. Hey, listen, Bruce, yeah. this has been fantastic. So um, there's so many takeaways for our audience today. But, you know, the first one is like, you know, find, find, I think, find that artistic expression really fast, because I think that's a huge, huge and a great starting point. But that's a huge outlet. Um, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Exactly. If it makes your heart sing, do it. Yeah, exactly. And in my case, just keep to the singing heart and not the singing mouth. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, thanks a lot, Bruce. As I said, all of Bruce's information will be below this video. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.